Hey guys, what's going on? It is Expo Jesse. Today I'm going to show you how I go through back testing um, and pretty much start to finish. So I think back testing is a very integral part of my trading. It's something that definitely turned the tide for me um, from being, you know, just a regular uh, average trader to a, a profitable one. Uh, knowing that my system makes money in the long run and then also knowing, you know, that I will have losers is a is a big help to knowing and feeling confident in your trade plan. So for me, when I look to backtest, I go through three different parts. I make sure I have my trade plan. I make sure I have my backtesting template. And then I backtest on trading view primarily. If you are an options trader and want to backtest an options strategy, you can use Thinkorswim's on demand feature. I use it personally and I like it. Um, I'm sure there's other platforms that, that let you backtest options. That's just one that I have used previously. So we'll go over my trade plan real quick. So this is just a test trade plan we did in a, a, in a different part of the class. Um, so I don't start trading until 9.45 Eastern. I look for inside bar candles. This is for options pretty much. Uh, entry signal is going to be an inside bar setup, so 2-1x or 3-1x off of the strap by Rob Smith. I have Fibonacci retracements as well, so I'll play either both of these would be like the A++ setup for me, or just one or the other is fine as well. Confluence, I use smart money concepts, order blocks, and regular price action, just price action being are we making higher highs or higher lows and or sorry higher highs or lower lows and if we are is there a chart pattern i can look for i don't look for patterns frequently i don't draw any trend lines or color on my chart at all uh, i just play straight price action so i want to take all the subjectivity out of trading that i can and uh, that's what i found has worked for me and then when i back test i also need so i have an entry signal i need an exit signal so for me that is fibonacci levels the strat trims or a reversal so um you can do it a couple ways i've seen back testing done where um you just move your stop loss up and up and that works as well uh really just whatever i'm willing to do in the real world that's what i need to back test uh and i i need to make sure that my back tests are extremely extremely uh, systematic so that I can replicate it without emotion in the real stock market. So on TradingView, I will go and as you can see, I'm just making my price as thin as possible. I'll go to a random day that I don't know what happened. I'm not going to look at the volume indicator. And then I'm going to pick just a random day. So we'll go here. And then at the very top of the toolbar for me, there's a little rewind button. You can hit bar replay, and then you'll have this little vertical line that comes up. And then if you click it at a time, so I clicked it down here, you can see the time. It's 17th of June of 2020. And then I can enlarge price here. So once I do that, I will load up my template with all of my strat um, on it and then I'll go and down to the five minute chart so I know that it's 945 here actually if I click one more so I know that for me and, and we're only going to do a couple of these just so you can see how I would enter them into the the excel sheet um, but I know for me for my strategy that's a 212 at 945 I'm really looking for reversals now, if I'm looking at this chart, I see a couple things. I see an order block here, and then another one right, really right above that area. So uh, I'm going to go down to the one minute chart and look for an entry. I know that we had a five minute inside bar set up here. So I will draw horizontal lines here because I know that above there is an entry long and below is an entry short. And of course it won't let me do that. So no problem, we'll go back to the five minute chart. And I know it was 17th of June. And we're not gonna cheat best we can. All right, so fast forwarded a little, missed that signal of course. <laughs> um, so trading view, 
<coughs> excuse me, uh, only gives you a certain amount of bars. So clearly that was too many bars for the five minute chart. So I'll actually, you know, even though I messed up, I'll actually show you how uh, I would adapt. So I would clear this, go back, go to the one minute chart, do the same thing with price, make the time as thin as possible, and then just scroll back. So we're on the one minute chart. And uh, as you can see, we only go back to the 24th of July. So I don't love it, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to hit that bar replay button, look for 945 on the timestamp there, and go down, and then we are live. So now we can enlarge price again. Sorry about that, but uh, it actually helps because now you can see what happens when you know there is an error so here at 945 literally the same thing inside bar um i would you know just act as if this were the live scenario i don't see anything going up i see order blocks here i see another order block here um, i can draw a fib line from the start of the downtrend there so i know we hit our 50 percent retrace already so everything's really screaming short to me, right? So I'll draw my, like I said, I'll draw my horizontal lines, but I also have to keep in mind that a little left here, here's an order block. Um, and then here's another one, kind of overlap. So I know that this one's gonna be pretty strong. So if I go down to the one minute, clear this fib, and then uh, actually I'll go back to the five and mark my horizontal lines. And this is just an example for me, right? So this is just, I mean, obviously I've already back tested my strategy, but I will say that over this yellow or white line here and over under that white line will be an entry signal. And I'm already feeling pretty short. So we'll take our stop or our uh, long short position. I guess I should show that. So if you click, it's uh, not the cursor, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns down, or rows down rather. I then click the little area to enlarge the menu. You'll have a long and short position. If you star them, it'll show up on this floating toolbar that I have here on TradingView. So I already have my entry signal is below that candle, right? So a break of that white line. My stop loss would be uh, if I'm playing it really tight, it would be below that candle. So let's fast forward a second. We're still here. We haven't gotten an entry signal yet. Rejection there. So now I'm really looking to play short because we double rejected that area. If we continue, if we break this level higher, then I'll go long. But it doesn't look like it. So that would have been my entry signal there. As soon as this was a two down bar, so in real time, obviously you can't see a second by second chart. So um, you're gonna have to give yourself some leniency. I would say somewhere in this area is where my um, order would have been. And then probably a three point stop loss. And then we'll see what happens. So there we got uh, one R and then stop loss break even. Here's an inside bar and a two up. So we'll count that as a 1R play. There's a 212. I always play 212s on the break of the inside bar, stop loss below, and play for the break up. So this is a four point play, and we've already hit about 1R. So my stop loss would be break even. And then no trigger yet. There is a trigger, so stop loss break even after another 1R play. So this is, I mean, I'm, don't focus on the actual back testing part. That'll be completely dependent on your strategy alone. This is on the one minute time frame. I don't play on the one minute time frame. Time frame. I play on the five and the 15. And then sometimes I do enter on the one, but I don't ever back test on the one. Um, but anyway, that disclaimer behind. So here's how I would enter it. So uh, 25th of July, so date 725, because I'm American. I went short ES stop loss was three points and we went three points in profit so stop loss three point three point profit return risk was one r percentage return was 100 percent same date obviously we went long 
four and a half point stop loss. So you can hit control and drag. I went long, ES, 4.5 point stop loss, 4.5 point profit. Let's see if I can fast forward a little bit. And there was the big move that we were looking for before. Fast forward. And this is how you'll do it. So I was a little late in that one. I, You got to be careful not to do exactly what I just did, click in too much. So we'll go back to the bar replay. I already know this is going to be a winner because I just saw it. But, oops, I did it again. So inside bar, five minute break of this inside bar below would be my entry. Stop loss would be above the inside bar if you want to play it really tight. Obviously, if you can get down to the one minute when it, when it crosses, then you can have a little tighter of an inside bar. So like here, uh, my stop loss would be probably in this area, and I never close on a wick, so I wouldn't have gotten stopped out there. So five point stop loss, and then uh, we're at 1.5 R. Let's see if we tag two. Uh, here's another inside bar. So we'll play the same thing, break under here, and uh, stop loss, we will see. Stop loss probably in that area, so five point stop loss. And you got tagged, and 0.5R, but we'll count this as a loss just so you see how the stats work. Uh, so the first play was a five point stop loss, 10, 10 point, or we actually got 1.5 R, so seven and a half points, and this was short. Es 5.7.5. Um, just click and drag here. Sorry. Click and drag. Um, so you, if on Google Sheets, if you just click and drag at the bottom right of this uh, call or cell here. It'll show you the same thing. So here we'll do short ES, five point stop loss, and we lost five points. So a minus 100% play there, just because you lost 100%, obviously, of what you're, you're willing to risk. Um, so essentially, you just uh, I would just do this however many times. Usually, if, if I'm doing a new strategy, I want to see at least 100 trades. Uh, it doesn't have to be you know one to one arm. You know, a lot of times you hope it is. Um, on ES, you know, my stop loss on general plays while I'm when I'm trading are anywhere from two to to five points on average. Um, let's see if we can get one more here just for kicks and giggles. And then it it rejected this zone there, so we'll get an inside bar and probably go down. And exactly like I just said, so there's the entry signal. And then I take my stop loss based on the entry trigger. So as soon as we crossed here, we had another 212 on the one minute stop loss above the inside bar there. So one and a half points. And then you can see, you can kind of do the, the guesswork there. So we stop loss break even there after 4.5R, one and a half point stop loss. So last one here for the video, ES. 1.5 point stop loss and uh, take profit was at 4.5 R, so 6.75 points of profit. And this will be a little different for options, obviously. Options, you would uh, just go onto Thinkorswim or whatever platform you have there and uh, and just use the on -dem I use the on-demand feature and then you would use the options tracker here. So, you know, if I, if I opened an um, a play on 725 and close at the same day because it's a day trade spy. Let's say it's the the 40 the 400 puts, and then you can put the expiration. So you know, same day expiration. We got in for one and got out for 1.5. You made a 50% return. Um, and then I also have this little piece here that that just calculates what your uh, percentage would be based on your portfolio size and your risk. Um, so for me, I have 5, 10, 25, and then just a for funsies full port. Obviously, I would never do that, but I have that just for fun. Um, and yeah, that's so that's how I backtest. Um, 
I will make a separate video on how to backtest on Thinkorswim, but it will be with the same Excel sheet. So hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or reach out to me on Twitter or Discord. Uh, all my links are below in my link tree. And uh, yeah, have a good one, guys.